Hey there, Truth Seeker. Welcome to the channel and community where we focus on developing the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to accelerate your ascension into the fifth dimension and beyond. For those returning, welcome back and a massive hello to our new subscribers or listeners. My name is David Keratin. I am a galactic astrologer, author, indigo warrior, and EDM DJ. Feel free to check out my playlist linked below. My partner Sana and I work together with Galactic Astrology. Going forward, we plan to expand our blogs into a podcast format so Sana can be involved in these fascinating reviews. For disclosure, we subscribe to the Astro App professional astrology platform, although we are not affiliated with them for marketing. We will link their homepage in the description below. Today we are going to talk about the profound full moon lunar eclipse of May 16, 2022, which many are calling a blood moon. 16 in the tarot is the tower with references to upheaval, chaos and destruction. The tower conveys Uranian energy. The lightning striking the building is an allegory reminding us to review our emotional, mental and material existence. The Tower Tarot speaks about coming into clear light, clear sight, opening the windows of perception, paying attention to our intuition and activation of our third eye. The Tower Energy shows us where we may be deceived. Using simple numerology for May 16, 2022, we arrive at 18, which is the card for the moon, the symbol of cycles, rhythm, perceptions and emotions. The moon asks us to go inward, to contemplate, consider and review what is taking place in our lives. With the moon located in Libra during this eclipse, we are talking about significant relationships, be they past or present, coming into the light. Libra represents the scales of justice, balance, harmony and equilibrium. All actions have a reaction. We are therefore responsible for the impacts of our words and decisions within significant relationships. This is the unequivocal message of Saturn, square the moon, in Libra at this time. Concurrently, we are also accountable for our use of resources within relationships. Libra says that all energies must be in equilibrium, and so it is at this full moon. Balance between our emotions and our intellect, our right and left brain, will be available to us when we communicate openly. We are encouraged now to go inward, to listen to our spirit who has something important to say. Mercury asks us to think, where the moon asks us to feel. Fortunately, the process of unfolding emotionally, of showing vulnerability, is supported by Saturn as the apex of a T-square between the Sun and the Moon. Think of a triangle with a Sun-Moon forming the base and Saturn at the high point. This is a wonderful position for Saturn to be when we are seeking balance. Saturn is the perfect mediator here as he brings a steady, rigorous, disciplined hand to proceedings. Saturn is about mastery using structure and processes to achieve something of value. Saturn is also about calling us to account, as he represents the manifestation of cause and effect in physical matter. Saturn asks us to consider our conduct in significant relationships on one hand, represented by Libra, and our use and management of raw materials on the other, represented by Taurus. To be clear, these Libra relationships can be romantic, professional or platonic. The key insight with these relationships is that they are significant to you. As such, they will involve some form of implied or explicit contract and commitment between parties. Venus as the guardian of Taurus and Libra plays a key role here at this full moon. Generally regarded as a supportive energy in astrology, Venus's domain is beauty, sensuality, refinement and grace. 
She is the queen of the court. At the time of this blood moon, Venus is in Pisces, forming a tight conjunction with Chiron, the physician. This connection between the queen and the physician suggests that any unresolved emotional or physical trauma surfacing now can be treated through conscious awareness. Chiron represents our core wounds and how we overcome them. He is named after a Greek healer, philosopher and teacher who, ironically, could not heal himself. Chiron is symbolised by a key, demonstrating the importance of unlocking the lessons of our soul memories. Pisces represents dissolution and emergence, which in this context is about rehabilitation of deep wounds, be they mental, as in Mercury, or emotional, as in the Moon. Mars and Pisces trine the Moon is about having the courage to examine our shadow aspects. When you do so, we can emerge transformed, reflected in the Sun trine Pluto. We bring forward into consciousness a completely renewed sense of self, free from pain. This full moon is packed with massive potential to take quantum leaps in our emotional intelligence, to open our third eye, and to resolve core wounds or trauma reflected in Chiron. We may confront long-term issues or injuries, mental, emotional, or physical. With the Sun and Taurus conjunct Mercury in a square to Saturn, the focus here is on resource management. We are being asked to think about this deeply. To ponder how we transform our relationship with the supply chain of, of life's essentials, food, shelter, clothing, water, and luxury items or non-essentials. All of this is on the table now. As you will feel and sense from this reading, this eclipse is about seeing the world as it is. We are being challenged to review our deep-seated, perhaps stubborn beliefs, to consider how we interact with significant others in our lives. The distinction here is that these Libra relationships can be personal or professional. Taurus brings a focus to your resources within the context of these important relationships. Saturn is about order, structure and mastery of the material world. Libra is about finding balance, in this case between your head, represented by Mercury, your heart, represented by the Sun, and your emotions, represented by the Moon. Having said this, the Moon is in a challenging square with Saturn at this time. This suggests that there may be some relationship structures that need to be reviewed or reconfigured to ensure that they are serving your best interests. Saturn inevitably also brings into focus a need to settle karmic debts. So, before we go further into the reading, in our practice we utilise galactic astrology, which includes the 13th sign. Unfortunately, Ophiuchus was removed by the Babylonians and Roman astrologers. The galactic system is based on actual time the sun spends in each constellation as opposed to an arbitrary 30 days. Should you look up a night sky app, you will clearly see that the constellation of Ophiuchus exists, sitting northwest of the centre of the Milky Way. When included in the zodiac, there is no such thing in 13 sign astrology as Scorpio at 25 degrees. This is because it only takes seven days for the sun to traverse through the Scorpius constellation, therefore Scorpio only has seven degrees. I thought I was born a Scorpio with a Sagittarius moon, but on discovering galactic astrology I quickly realised that I was in fact a Libra sun with an Ophiuchus moon. I never felt like a Scorpio. I have been practicing and studying astrological systems from the West and East for more than 30 years, and despite all the books and research, Scorpio Sun with Sagittarius Moon did not fit intuitively. So bear with me for a moment as I take you through a quick thumbnail sketch of Ophiuchus and the space agency NASA. 
also known as the snake bearer or golden eagle, Ophiuchus is situated near the constellations of Aquila, Serpens and Hercules, opposite Orion. Aquila in Greek mythology is identified as the eagle that carried Zeus's thunderbolts. Ophiuchus is associated with the divine ether, the quintessence, and the hero's journey to his or her magnum opus. The opus describes the evolution of consciousness through to enlightenment. Astronomically, the southern part of Ophiuchus lies between Scorpius to the west and Sagittarius to the east. For this reason, many Scorpios are, in fact, Libras, and Sagittarians, Ophiuchans. These energies are significantly different. Galactic astrology is ancient knowledge that has been kept secret to all but the insiders who have used it for their advancement, while at the same time presenting the rest of us with an incorrect version of astrology. This sleight of hand deception has generated multiple false timelines. Most astrology gives us incorrect timelines because we are shown through pretty graphics and blogs, distorted planetary movements, conjunctions and events. This is no basis for planning or insights to help us evolve. Galactic astrology, once applied to your life, can have profound impacts on how you perceive and interpret your reason for incarnation. You will progressively, with application, unlock your purpose, your path for this life, and your karmic baggage. Ophiuchus contains the second closest star to Earth, Barnard's star, and she touches the elliptic of the sun and the moon. In 2016, NASA tweeted and blogged about this important subject. Ophiuchus, like all other signs, has energy, frequency and vibration. For us, Ophiuchus carries the spirit of the divine feminine intelligence. When we ignore her presence in astrology, we omit an essential part of the astrological mosaic created by Source Consciousness. So, the moon under the galactic astrology system is not in Scorpio at this full moon, but in Libra. Many of the posts that I have read about this blood moon focus on the darker aspects of Scorpio, when this is not only inaccurate, but misleading. NASA explained that there are 13 signs planet Earth encounters in a revolution around the Sun. For reasons unknown, the Babylonians who devised the zodiac signs left out the 13th sign of Ophiuchus without any scientific basis. Ophiuchus was discarded to make the astrology system neater and simpler. A 2016 blog posted by NASA says that, quote, in a bid to make a tidy match with the 12-month calendar, the Babylonians ignored the fact that the sun moves through the 13 constellations, not 12. NASA also said that, quote, the Babylonians went on to divide the year equally between the 12 signs without any sound reasoning, close quote. You will find extensive content discussing at galactic astrology in our blogs under our channel, so feel free to review those at your leisure. We have linked references to NASA and the 13th sign astrology in the description below. So, with all that said, this reading for May 16 reflects the actual position of the Sun at the exact moment of the blood moon full lunar eclipse on May 16, 2022. In the 13th sign system, the Sun will be located at 1 degree Taurus opposite the Moon at 17 degrees Libra. This reading will therefore be very different to those based on popular astrological systems such as the Placidus or Ptolemaic Zodiac. These alternative systems with roots in the Roman pantheon will have the Sun at 25 degrees Taurus opposite the Moon at 25 degrees Scorpio. Many of these readings present the darker side of Scorpio as mentioned earlier with a focus on doom and gloom. So, for those new to our content, Please also review our post called Introduction to Galactic Astrology, uploaded on January 26, 2021. 
In that video we discuss how Claudius Ptolemy of Rome and his contemporaries furthered a process begun in Babylon 3,000 years ago of decoupling astrological signs from the constellations. The decoupling has produced an inorganic overlay that supports a false, unnatural timeline that is still with us today. So, to kick off, let us take a brief look at the technical 13 sign data for this important full moon lunar eclipse with some interpretations. Firstly, we live on a free world planet. I therefore liken astrology to a weather radar. When you see it, it is going to rain. You may want to have an outdoor party, but then you have a choice whether to stay outside, use an umbrella or get wet, or take the gathering indoors. Or, if you know that the tide is coming in at 6am and this is the best time to go fishing, then you are empowered to make that choice. The sun, as mentioned earlier, is located at 1 degree Taurus opposite the moon at 17 degrees Libra. The sun is sandwiched in a wide conjunction with retrograde Mercury at 10 degrees Taurus on one side and Uranus at 16 degrees Aries on the other. This is a formidable location for Uranus who represents lightning. Sudden, unforeseen change that can be disruptive to a sleeping consciousness. The Sun also forms a trine to retrograde Pluto, who at 31 degrees 59 minutes Sagittarius sits literally right on the cusp of Capricorn. The Moon and Sun are both in a T-square to Saturn at 25 degrees Capricorn. So, this full moon is extremely potent. Saturn, as mentioned earlier, is the apex point, the balance between the sun and moon. This is an important insight given what Saturn represents in the archetypes of astrology. Saturn symbolizes mastery and karma, learning from our lessons, and taking stock or inventory of our resources. This blood moon eclipse generates a three-way battle of energies. In this scenario, we have the deep inward emotional energies of the moon, the expressive outward all-consuming energies of the sun, and the structured methodical karmic energies of Saturn. Saturn means that we always pay the price for unresolved emotional, material or mental issues. Saturn is a teacher who implores us to take disciplined steps to master any conflicts between our head and our heart in this scenario. With Mercury conjunct the Sun opposite the Moon and in a square to Saturn, we will not be able to avoid thinking about our past, present or future. There will be no hiding our emotions either. When a T-square appears, we experience intense energy that compels us to make or take decisions. The action impulse is signified at this full moon by Mars in Pisces. Active decisions now will help us conclude or dissolve trauma or conflicts emerging in our life. We can come out of these stronger, more confident and more self-assured if we choose to act consciously. Any unpleasant scenarios we have been avoiding in our committed relationships represented by the Moon and Libra now require urgent attention. Chickens are coming home to roost. The Moon trying Jupiter supports this process of self-discovery and reconciliation. Jupiter acts as a counterbalance to the T-square energy of Saturn and the Sun and Moon which can be relentless and unstoppable. We will also touch on the moon and a trine to Vulcanus, the god of fire and volcanoes. Vulcanus trine the moon suggests that it will be impossible to keep our emotions suppressed. However, given other supportive planetary alignments at this time, expressing our fears, concerns or anxieties is beneficial. We can confidently bring our worries into the open supported by the Venus conjunction with Chiron in Pisces. Vulcanus, who many, which many astrologers do not talk about, is located at 4 degrees Cancer, the home of the moon. 
Therefore, his volatile energies play an important role in this blood moon eclipse story. We have shared in depth about the myth of Vulcan in our blog called Vulcan in the Galactic Zodiac, a tragic mother and son story. Vulcan is identified with Sethlin's myth of hammer and tongs. During the festival of Vulcanalia, fish or small animals were burned as a sacrifice in the place of humans. This is called karmic substitution, a dark occult practice used to subjugate the natural laws of cause and effect represented by Saturn. If we have been trying to avoid taking responsibility for our behaviour within personal or professional relationships or we are engaged in emotional conflict, it is time to back down and find some middle ground. With Vulcanus in the watery, emotional sign of cancer, the trine energy offers release from unconscious patterns of behaviour brought kicking and screaming to the surface of our awareness. With the moon and sun in a T-square with Saturn, accompanied by the sun conjunct Mercury and Uranus, there is a lot of positive, action-oriented energy in the field right now. We can take quantum leaps in consciousness by reforming our attitudes and beliefs about money, resources and relationships. So, in summary, this blood moon eclipse is about committed relationships both personal and professional represented by the moon in Libra. We are talking about unearthing and facing our unconscious instinctive emotional patterns that show up within committed relationships. Our focus should also be on how we use the supply chain, paying attention to wasteful use of resources. With Mercury, the archetype of communication is activated, so it is time to talk. With Jupiter trying the moon, the energies are supportive and beneficial. With Pluto trying the sun, we are talking about profound and lasting transformation of our emotions. We can also transform outdated ideas about relationships and our concepts about money, power and resources. With Saturn there will be issues potentially coming to the surface that need to be resolved in a structured way. Saturn here is about making conscious amicable agreements, finding a place of compromise or balance in these discussions or disputes within relationships. With Venus in conjunction with Chiron, we have an opportunity to tap into our core, most fundamental wounds, either from this life or past lives, bringing them to light so we can heal them. With Uranus and Vulcanus involved, there is potential for an explosive, perhaps impulsive or emotionally destructive element to emerge from the depths of our unconscious at this full moon. Mercury retrograde may feel like a do-over, while Pluto offers transformative power. With Pluto and Saturn involved so closely in this full moon, unresolved karma resulting from disputes or manipulation within relationships about resources will surface. The good news is that this is an amazing time to seek reconciliation, resolution, rehabilitation and restitution so you can bring balance to important relationships. To be clear, these relationships can be strategic, tactical or transactional in nature. And we are referring to any relationship, past or present, where there have been unexpressed emotions, power imbalances or arguments over resources. These can be structured arrangements involving contracts and commitments with personal, professional or platonic partners. If you are not in a serious personal or professional relationship, you may still be affected by this eclipse as it involves unexpressed emotions, personal blind spots and repressed thoughts or memories that need to be surfaced so you can move on. If you are stuck emotionally, this is a good time for talking about what is happening for you. These full moon energies will reference a past or present relationship. If past, it will be one that was not left with positive, life-affirming communication. Alternatively, these full moon energies will ask you to reflect on your ideas and beliefs about resource management, the supply chain, and your interaction with Mother Earth. This concludes our blog for today. Thank you for listening. 
please like, share and subscribe. You will also find us on David Keraton on Facebook where we have a growing global community of like minds. Namaste. This has been a production of Star Kittens Media and all rights are reserved.